Padre Pini in et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Our saints for today, St. John and Paul, are uh, early Roman martyrs, and they received the crown of martyrdom in the year 362 uh, at the hands, or rather under the uh, rule, of Julian the Apostate. Uh, so this was uh, the year 362. It was some uh, 50 years after the victory of Constantine the Great. Uh, the Battle of Milvian Bridge, he became the emperor, and the following year, in 313, decreed the Edict of Milan, in which uh, Catholicism, Christianity, was granted legal status. You could now openly be, be Catholic and not be tortured or persecuted for it. So that had happened 50 years previous. Constantine had done a great work for the church. Council of Nicaea was called. Uh, the church really began to establish herself. And, uh, you know, for 300 years, the church was persecuted, uh, but kept growing, kept growing, kept growing. And finally, uh, with, under the reign of Constantine, uh, the church was able to blossom, we could say, above ground. The roots had been laid, and then there was this blossoming. Uh, but after some 50 years, in the year 361, a man was, uh, became emperor, Julian. He was not one of the sons of Constantine. Uh, Julian had been baptized, been raised a Christian, but he repudiated this. Uh, and he became emperor, was known as Julian the Apostate. An apostate is somebody who completely rejects their baptism. A heretic is somebody who, after baptism, rejects a particular truth of the faith, but an apostate rejects all of it. So this was Julian, and he uh, was not so much concerned about, uh, he, he didn't like Christianity, he wanted to be rid of it, but he'd seen in the past that if you attempt a direct persecution against the church, it only makes things worse. Uh, so this Emperor Julian uh, uh, sought to weaken the status of the church, to weaken its influence by making the empire, the Roman Empire, uh, returning it to paganism. That was his goal. And one of his um, uh, efforts or one of his decrees was that anyone who uh, was in service to the military, to the government, in administration, uh, teaching in schools, had to take essentially an oath of allegiance to the emperor. They had to sacrifice to Jupiter, sacrifice to the gods, prove their loyalty to the state first, and then they could believe whatever they wanted. Right? Does, does that sound familiar these days? Uh, so St. John and Paul had both been officers in the army under uh, Constantine, and then later they served as uh, high-ranking officers in the household of Const Constantia, that was the daughter of Constantine. And when Julian the Apostate uh, became emperor, he expected all the members in the royal household, the imperial household, to take this oath. Well, of course, John and Paul refused, being good uh, Catholics, absolutely not. In fact, they upbraided the emperor for his uh, denial of his faith. Uh, they said they would never um, uh, swear allegiance to anyone other than Christ our Lord, and certainly not to anyone who had denied Christ our Lord. So he handed them over to a judge, uh, Tarent Tarentinian was his name, who gave them 10 days, 10 days to repudiate the faith or uh, face uh, beheading. Uh, well, of course, they, they, they stood firm and did receive the crown of martyrdom after 10 days. And there was quite an interesting, uh, we could say, phenomena in that the prayers of the saints do a great deal of good in holding back all of the evil uh, in the world, all that Satan wishes to accomplish uh, by our prayers, by the sacrifice of the Mass, by our witness, by our, our, our litanies, by our rosaries, our, our attendance at Holy Hour. All of these things serve to avert calamities. Uh, this is actually very clearly um, explained in the Council of Trent in the chapter on the Our Father. Uh, I suggest everybody read it. Get a copy of the Trent, read the Our Father, read the section on uh, our prayer in general. Very, very good. Uh, so the prayers of the saints are instrumental in averting the wrath of God, in placating the wrath of God, in holding back the forces of Satan. And if people stop praying, uh, those good things cease. And what we have with the death of St. John and Paul is a very um, uh, immediate example of that. For when they were beheaded, uh, immediately it seemed, uh, throughout just the, the household of the, of, the, of the emperor, the household of that judge, and all those people that had condemned John and Paul, in the city in fact in general, 
uh, there seemed to be an outbreak or an increase in demonic activity. Uh, people were harassed, people got sick. Uh, the son of the uh, judge who had condemned them to death uh, became blind inexplicably somehow. So there seemed to be this, this incredible increase, which, which is, is very, as I said, um, it's a consequence. Right? When you remove the people who are praying <coughs> for the aversion of disasters, when you remove the people who are holding back Satan, what do you think happens? Satan comes in and fills the void. And, and um, I'd have to say, uh, look at the state of the world these days. Look at what's happening to our country. Look what's happening in the world. There are riots everywhere. The world is burning down. People don't seem to know which end is up. And when did this happen? Right after all the bishops canceled mass. Are any of us surprised? I'm not. And this is the reason. You remove the worship of God. You remove all of the benefits of holy mass. You remove the one thing that is averting God's wrath from humanity. Here you go. This is the result. Maybe I'll say this on Sunday. I think the, wor the world needs to hear this. Right? Is there are consequences to our faith, and the world's going to find that out. The world will find out very quickly the Catholic faith is not like any of the other religions out there. Certainly like any of the pagan religions, the Jews, the Muslims, the, the, the Eastern, you know, mystics, whatever, uh, um, uh, Confucianism, Buddhism, uh, it's all baloney, right? At, at the most, they have something like natural wisdom guiding them, but there is nothing supernatural about their religions at all, except the demonic. Uh, even the Christian religions, in so far as they have baptism, uh, they have that that's a valid sacrament that can be pleasing to God in so far as they are trying to do the right thing, but they don't have the mass. Uh, they, they don't, they don't, uh, they're not able to come and worship God as he wants to be worshiped. That's the problem in the world. Put two and two together. Remove the mass, remove mankind's ability to beg God for mercy. We're not going to get mercy. I didn't write that down, by the way. That just kind of came out. It must have been the Holy Ghost or some kind of ghost. Yeah. So uh, the Tarentinian's son was blind. Uh, the prayers of John and Paul uh, or, uh, were no longer um, uh, protecting the household. So th this, this, this judge's son went to their grave where they had been buried, and he prayed, and his sight was restored, miraculously. So he converted, the son converted, and his father converted. The very judge who had condemned them to death converts and writes the account of their martyrdom. He writes it out and says, this, this is the, what happened, this is their death, I was the one who did it, and I repent. Right? That's the power of God. And there's, you know, there's another interesting lesson in here, too, uh, of Julian the Apostate. His attempts utterly failed, by the way, like to, to, to try to make a resurgence in, in paganism in his, in his empire. Completely failed. For one, he had only two years to do it, which wasn't enough uh, to do anything. Uh, paganism had been being stamped out for 50 years. Uh, and and when, when Julian saw this, he saw that he wasn't having too much success in bringing back paganism. He tried to bring back everything. He brought back exiled Aryan bishops. He brought back uh, pagan priests. He brought back any, the, the Jewish, you know, anything he could think of. So what, he, what, what uh, uh, Julian the Apostate wanted to do was weaken the church, weaken the Catholic church. And he did it by creating a religiously pluralistic society. Oh, every religion is welcome here. There's tolerance for all religions. And that weakens the one religion, the true religion. Because all these different religions make claims about reality. They make claims about truth. They make, make claims about right and wrong, good and bad. And when you just say, oh yeah, they're all equal, under who? Me, the one who says all these religions are equal and we can't know which is the right one. That's the person who's claiming authority. And that's what the government wants to do. When the government establishes there's no religion and you're all equal, the government is taking the place of God and saying, we're the arbiters. We know better than any of these religions out here that you, none of you have the, are, are, are true. None of you have the claim to the right religion. That's why it's, it's, it's a joke in this nation that we, we have religious pluralism and that's supported by the bishops as an evil thing and it's wrong because it's, it's saying that the truth isn't the truth. And it's the Catholic Church. It's in the church uh, and that's what everybody needs to believe and belong to. The Catholic Church is the custodian of reality and the guardian of truth. And, and, and we need to be able to say that. And it's getting to the point to where we need to be bold about our faith. 
because those pagans out there are, the people burning down and breaking laws and, and killing people and, and smashing property, they're bold about what they believe, but what about us? What about the Catholic Church? Are we saying what we believe? I don't hear it from anybody in authority. That's why it falls down on the lowest common denominator. This is what happens when I have all day to think about a sermon. Uh, so let's pray to Saints John and Paul. That, that, that by their influence, right, we may realize how important our prayers are. Right? Do we realize that? When we come to Mass, so many millions of Catholics are not doing that because they can't or, or, or they're not. But we can. Right? Thanks be to God. Try to come to Holy Mass every day if we can. Come to Holy Hour. Let's pray that daily rosary and ask those saints, right, inspire me with the knowledge just how important our prayers are. We can make a difference. You all are making a difference. Uh, one of the very few. Very important. Uh, say your daily prayers. God bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.